Meet Zach Galligan. He's not only a very normal young man, but he's also involved in very extra normal events in the new motion picture from Warner Brothers called Gremlins. Zach, you're what, 19 or 20 now? 20, yeah. And this is probably your biggest film assignment thus far. <laughs> yes, definitely. You've done a lot of TV work, though. Catch us up now on some of that kind of thing. I did. Uh, I played Roy Scheider and Lee Allman's son in Prisoner Without a Name. That was mm -hmm. an NBC uh, TV movie that aired last May, 83. And I did uh, an after school special for ABC called uh, A Very Delicate Matter. And that was that aired in November '82, and I did a guest shot on Another World soap opera. Now, before we get to the movie Gremlins itself, I've got to ask you: You've seen yourself on the small screen. Now you've seen yourself on the big screen. Mm. What's the difference in impact for you now as a viewer, not just as an actor? Um, hmm, it's an interesting question. On the small screen, I would say I was glad that the first stuff I did was uh, for television because. In the beginning, I had a tendency to do too much, and I was kind of overacting in a way. I hadn't really learned the subtleties of um, the lens, what it's like to act, to try and get an intimacy between you and the lens. So I was glad that some of my miscues, some of my mistakes, look a lot better on the small screen because it's not, it's not so huge. And now with Gremlins, I'm kind of glad because I think I still have some work to do, but I think I've made the adjustment to the larger screen more gracefully than I would have if I had gone in just right off the bat. And, uh, you know, because the camera gets so close and you have to be so careful not to do too much. I mean, just even a little squint of the eyes, you know, can say so much Especially on a huge on screen. screen. Absolutely, 40 <laughs> feet high. Yeah. <laughs> One blink can knock us all to the back, to the back wall of the theater. Exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> now, while you're reducing things down, there's a marvelous scene that comes to mind between you and Phoebe Cates early in the film. You're working at a bank and the two of you exchange a look that I thought was just marvelous. It says so much. We know that romance is about to blossom here. Working with Phoebe, tell us what that was like. Well, I had known her for a couple of years before I had gotten the role in the picture, and she's just, she's an incredibly sweet girl, and she's very beautiful, and it wasn't very difficult for me to imagine falling in love with her. Um, as our relationship progressed, as we continued to shoot the film, we really became more like uh, brothers and sisters, but uh, we, um, I think we managed to kind of get that spark of mm -hmm. romance in there and... Well, it's a very chaste relationship in a sense, although there is that, that screen kiss. Was there some debate about that, whether to have it? No, that, well, actually, I... You I, were all for it, I suppose. I... <laughs> well, I'm... Could you ask that question again? We had a, whatever that rumbling was in there. Surely. Okay. While you were working with Phoebe Cates, it's kind of a chaste relationship, but uh, as far as the screen kiss is concerned, was there any debate about whether to do it or not? No, I think everyone had decided that we wanted it in. We wanted it to be some sort of payoff to yeah. the fact that we had a relationship. And um, she and I, I think, were both a little nervous about doing the scene because, like I said, we were much more like brother and sister, and it, there was kind of uh, uh, a sweetness to our friendship, and we were kind of wondering how it would be. And then we just kissed each other after the first practice run-through, and we looked at each other, and we said, you know, what was the big deal? Because it really was, <laughs> yeah, it took a lot of the tension off. And... Um, that was the first day that uh, Steven Spielberg showed up on the set, so it was like quite a hectic day, and so there were there were a lot of pressures on the on the first on that on that day. So, but speaking of a big deal, working with the inanimate actors, the Gremlins mm. themselves, without spilling too many of the beans about the trickery, what was it like day to day when you were the only human actor on that set? <laughs> well, it was hard in uh, it was hard for a number of reasons because the gremlins were silent and none of the sounds had been put in until after the production so of course they were just they were making faces they were going like you know and so you had to kind of react to these faces and imagine what they would sound like so that was a little frustrating not exactly having the 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 entire creature the entire character there another thing was they had uh, wires kind of running up and down my arms and my legs and occasionally um, Occasionally, you know, they'd pinch you in the middle. It was kind of distracting, you know, having them run down your legs and into your shoes. Well, Spencer and, Tracy <laughs> once described acting as, among other things, learning how not to trip over the furniture. But you were wired. You had yeah. to not let those get in the way, too. Yeah, I had a couple of times I had to shuffle really slowly because there were people following me holding wires and things like that. So I kind of had to... It was, it was definitely distracting at times, but it was, it was good in a way because it was, a, it was a kind of discipline that I got used to. You had to be... Um, completely in character all the time. You had to, you had to make every take count. And uh, because oftentimes they would uh, take the best takes with the creatures in them. And they, you know, if your acting suffered, well then take that was your own, priority. exactly right. Wow. The creatures, if the creatures don't work, you can forget the uh -huh. film working. So I had kind of had to go in there and I had to be, um, you know, on, 
on my toes every single take. Zach, could we take some time, and I'd just like to ask you to look right into that camera and talk to the parents and, uh, and kids out there who mm -hmm. are thinking about going to see Gremlins, but may have heard through the grapevine that there's some violent episodes in it. Could you address yourself to that right now? Absolutely. I don't think that it's any more violent, truthfully, than anything that you see on television. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, if you, I would say, if you curtail your children's um, television watching habits, then you should probably do the same thing with Gremlins. If you want, if you think it might be too much for your kids, go and see it. If you think, I don't think personally it is. There's not a single drop of, of uh, human blood in it. There's, I don't think there's even a single curse. I haven't seen the final cut, though. It's really, it's basically... It, it is. It has some frightening elements to it, but it's about as frightening as uh, a spook house or uh, ghost stories around a campfire or a roller coaster. Or, I mean, people have been have always been attracted to to uh, to fear. I mean, I think a lot of people like to go see scary movies. They like to go into fun houses. They like to be scared because there's no real danger. It's just a movie. It's just something on the screen. Everyone knows it can't really hurt them. How it happens, nonetheless, that you are able to stay so normal throughout such events. I wonder, if this had happened to you in real life, could you have really taken it with such normalcy and uh, you're able to get a lot of things done and you work against the gremlins eventually? <laughs> in real life, you have to wonder. Yeah, that's true, but at the same time, the character realizes it's his fault in a way. It's he is the one who's caused a lot of the problems to come and it's up to him. He has to take responsibility. He has to take charge or else, you know, the situation will get out of hand. He's got hundreds of lives at stake. These things are nasty little critters, and he's got to get out there and stop them before something, you know, dread terrible happens. It's, it's kind of already happening around him, but he has to become, he has to become the, the hero in a way, and in a way, deep down inside, that's always what he's wanted to be. He's a, always wanted to be. Right, because it's a bit of a hero. Pandora's box. But Absolutely. Because of that box, exactly. you can test yourself. Huh? Exactly. That's a nice positive note to leave this on Gremlins. It's new motion picture from Warner Brothers. Zach Galligan is the possessor of a very, very magical box indeed from Gremlins. Zach, I want to thank you very much. Thanks. And best to your future as thank well. Thank you. This is John Tibbetts.